Hey guys and welcome back. In this video I'll be going over the memory map and the map locations for the Atari 2600. So stick around for that. Alright, so here we have a quick diagram of our map locations. And uh, if you need to know what a memory map is, I did make a video about it. But it's pretty much we have this range, so this address range from 0 to 7FF, is our TIA, our Television in Interface Adapter. And whenever we write on this in this range, you're pretty much just talking to the TIA. So it's pretty much hardwired. I'm gonna actually, the TIA is gonna hog the memory, so it's a brief explanation, it's a memory map. So all those addresses map to the TIA so if I write to it I'm gonna affect the TIA so so let me show you guys really quick what that's about okay so here back at your code that we've been looking at forever and uh, if you come down over here we have our store what's in X at the color background that's our mnemonic color background Oh, should I say column? It's a column background. And uh, if you come over here, I include our file VCS. Let's go over here. Uh, right here, highlighted. It's your color and luminance background. And it is right here, DS, which is pretty much a reserve in a space, 09. So as you see, 09 is mapped to the TIA, and the TIA specifically uses the 09 location for the color luminance background so if you come over here and uh, change this let's just do the address 09 and if we're to assemble our code over here go back to the bug uh, let's go over here so increase x is store even if you see over here it's storing even though I put 09, oh, let me go back to your debugger over here. You see, saying increase in star what's in X and location X at the column background. So that's pretty much what what a map location is. So let me go back over here, save this, and go back to the diagram. And here we have what's in our VCS file header and exactly like the headers you have here have your your color in luminosities background I refer to that as a column it's color lum so I just I just refer as a column but it's a color in luminosity because over here we have a full by from 0 to 7 and you have two enables one in a by so one enable is going to be for the color and the next one is going to be for the luminosity. And over here, as you see, there's nothing over here that we don't use. Only where there's the ones over here is the values that we use. So quick. I go over it later when I go to the next video, most likely the playfield. But that's a quick review. And that's under our seller programming guide. So that's our map area or range from 0 to 7F for so TI8 we just saw. As you remember, the color and luminosity background co column, that's what I like to say because it's shorter, is 09. Since it's really within this range, we're talking to the TIA. That's what's mapped to. So that's the TIA. Let's go over the next, which is our RAM. As you see over here, RAM in the next one now, which is input, output, and timer, is all part of our riot chip. So let me show you guys from the schematic so we're here with the schematic of the Atari 2600 and right over here you have a microprocessor and right over here what you want to see is the 6532 that's our riot chip which handles our input output our RAM and our timer I'll talk about timer later but right over here we have our inputs right over here control paddle I think it's paddle I can't even read this then you have your inputs 
So here are your controllers, or pedals, or keyboards. All the proliferal on the that came with the Atari 2600. And also we have our our manual inputs that we have over here from our levers, from the color, difficulty, select, and start, and so forth. So all of this is being handled by the by this 6532 riot chip. So that was part of it, riot chip and part of it has a RAM. If you remember from the previous video I went over the Atari uh, specifications and one of them is that we only had 128 bytes of RAM. So that's because we can only access from the value 80 to FF that's our 128 bytes comes from. But in reality our actual RAM has 8K 8 kilobytes of mem uh, memory RAM, but all of the memory RAM is being mapped to other places. One of them being the TIA, the RAM, and you know, all our other ones. So that's why it said you only had 120 bytes. That's all we can use, but in reality, it's 8K because 2 to the power of 13 is actually 8K. Since because the 6507 only has 13 pins which I went over from the previous video. So that's our RAM. And the other part of the riot chip is our input output and our timers. It's also gonna be within this range. And of course we have the last one right over here from the last 4K from 100 to 1 FFF. That's our ROM, that's our binary files, that's where our, our assembly code, if you remember from the 6502 videos, I believe our emulator began at the 600 hacks page and so forth. That's where our instructions were being stored, that's where they're being read. So that's where our game is going to start at. It's going to start at 100 to 1 FFF. So let me just go back to the other code and show you guys this 100 to 1 FFF. Okay, so I'm here back on my code. And uh, if you remember from that video, as soon as I put the segment, it's going to begin generating our output file. And here you have our origin, which you're reporting at F000. And here is where our code is going to be stored and uh but if you remember not too long ago i showed you the game our binary our rom is actually being stored from the origin a thousand to one fff here we have our two actually our three uh interrupts reset and as soon as uh, just a quick review of this reset. Uh, when you actually reset the game, it's telling you to reset. It's pretty much coming come over here. So if you remember, the Atari 2600 actually has a reset button, uh, pretty much like the old systems. So as soon as you push reset, we want to come right over here and reinitiate our game from here instead of over here. Uh, just a quick review of that, of this interrupts, but uh, as you see over here, I actually put a thousand and one FFFA. Oh, that's because we have over here three words, so it completes the whole thing. So B, C, C, D, E, F. So here's the one FFF. Uh, oh, sorry, I got distracted. So here we have from a thousand. I don't want FFF. If I were to assemble this, as you see, there's no errors and errors, and everything went fine perfectly. And if you see over here, it actually accepts our code. And just to show you that it does work, let me change this to, instead of one, let me put two and two over here. Assemble, and right over here, it's going doesn't know what to do with it because it's not a valid value and if you're wondering why is that why if I put an F over here and an F over here for a symbol and it works 
Uh, let me go over over here on this. Uh, I have here a web application. And let's put the value 1000 over here. Convert it. Let me copy over here. Let me go over here. Let me paste this value over here. Here is 100. Uh, you know what? Let me. Let me just word. Uh, yeah, let's bring Adam over here. And um, why it's loading? Because it's my computer is it's a bit old. Let me explain why is this happening. And that's simply happening because if you remember, the Atari Twin X hundred is not a sixty five hundred two; it's a sixty five hundred seven, and it is missing three pins on the chipset which corresponds to one byte of data each uh, oh, here's my code, let me open a new file let me close to the left don't save let me close over here, over here, okay so here we have the value 100 in hex and if I were to separate this to enables here you have four here four so here you have one byte let me parenthesize this each one of this is one byte let me parenthesize this other byte over here so I'll put it separated like this nah actually just have a space as you see over here if you remember it's missing three uh, pins or chipsets and if you notice over here I just added a three zero over here so right over here this is the serve zero this is one this is two this is three it's four five six seven it's our normal byte then seven 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 0 for 12 or 13. And as you see, this tree, the 6507 is going to completely ignore this. So it doesn't matter what values you have over here, as long as this is a 1, the 6507 is going to use this as the value 100. So if I were to go back over here in our value, Input app 000, convert over here. Let me copy your pay. Let me copy and paste our code over here. Also, this is app 000, parenthesize, a little bit of work over here. Four, four, space. So, let's one more time over here. And here you where is the magic happens. As you see, even though it's F000, all the first the last three should I say since it's the, the most value over here are completely ignore. So we can pretty much use a bunch of other uh hexed range. Come over here. So if I put the two thousand oops press enter. 2000 that's when the game didn't happen well it happened but not what we wanted so let's put over here 2000 hex space 44 four. Zero, zero. So when I put that actually the value, oops, 200, as you see over here, this was represented as a, here, a zero. So even though this is the same as this, 200 is the same as zero. So this is the same as zero. And this is the same as 100. Because the less three values are completely ignored so that means you have a, a bit of a range so like 300 would work since there's a one over here 
I think 500 would work. And so forth. I believe uh, every other thousand. So here you have 5, 7, 9, and then B, and then D, and so forth through F. Every other thousand would be the A valid. A valid value for our origin so we can have our output so pretty much it's gonna ignore all the rest over here so before I go let me go back no go to this Atari 8 section over here have memory architecture which I'll, I just went over through and here right over here uh, as you see, it started out pretty nice from 0 to 7F and 7F ready to FF. But then we're starting missing some areas over here. And uh, if you wondering what's happening, if we go all the way down, uh, Robert M has our entire section over here. So here we have a TIA. And then right over here, we have our bytes over here. That's our RAM. And then uh, that's all the other section that's missing. And as, as you notice over here, we have a shadow. And uh, this shadow pretty much is a, what we call a memory mirror, memory mirroring or memory mirroring. That's pretty much like what's inside of this is pretty much what's inside of that. It's this one. So for example, right over here on your and our code over here, we have our 0, 80 to FF is our RAM. And then we have our shadow, which is mirroring our 80 to FF uh, somewhere over here from 180 to FF. So if we go to our code over here, oh, here we ha had our code, I had, I had a color block, so. Column, color, luminosity, background. Uh, let me just make sure it works. Okay, it works. Uh, so let's store what's in A. So it's storing vsync. Let's store also in our first address of our memory. So if I assemble debugger right over here, you have 002. Uh, so let me go back over here. Let me go. Uh, the first one is 180. So 0, 180. So if I will assemble over here, not sure. Oh, here it is. H2 is right where we had our our primary uh, RAM location. Is this was pretty much mirroring this 180. However, if I were to put like 280. Which should be what's on 280 under that's our PIA. So let me assemble this 280, and here it is the PIA, which is the input and output. It's storing a value to that. It's not really anymore a two over here, and, and that's what mirroring is. So we are mirroring what's inside of this. It's also inside of that, and. The PIA is the peripheral interface adapter. That's our right, that's our right part over here. It's pretty much the same thing. The 6532, as you remember from the schematic. So that's pretty much gonna cover our. Oh, let me delete this and want this back. Our video. Uh, in the next video, I think I go over uh, the sprites, even though there is no really. It's, it's probably it's not really defined and back at the time since the Atari 2600 is really a was designed to be a modular Pong but uh, I'll leave that for the next video so the next video I'll most likely go over the play field if all that's said and done uh, that's it for this video and thanks for watching